Welcome to Composite Pro 4.0. For this video session, I'm just going to briefly go over some of the basics of using Composite Pro. For those of you who have used it before, this is not an entirely unfamiliar screen. We still have similar menu items across the top that you've seen before. What is new, though, is the data tree on the left-hand side. I'll quickly describe how to use that data tree. When you open Composite Pro for the first time, you'll be greeted with this window, and certainly you'll want to start, usually, typically, with one of, of these items on here. I want to build, perhaps, a new lamina, and I can choose that button, but I just want to remind you that on this data tree, I can do the same thing using shortcut menu. So if I want to build a new lamina, I can right-click there and choose New. That gives me an opportunity to build a new lamina. Conversely, I can go up to New Item and New Lamina as well. So let me go down through this data tree and show how each section of this works. The first thing that is somewhat unusual is the thickness angle template. Let's create a new thickness angle template. I'm going to call this uh, thickness example. And let's say that uh, in my manufacturing process, I typically like to use three plies that uh, are almost always, say, five thousandths uh, in terms of thickness. And I like to use zero and minus 30 and let's say plus 30 degrees each ply at 5 thousandths thick. And if I can save that, now I can close it here and sure enough under my data tree I have this thickness example. If I double click on it, it brings up that library. I'll show how to use that right now. Let's say I'm going to build a laminate now. I'll right click on my laminate option. I'm going to call this the bill laminate and I'll go over to my library button here and if I choose that it allows me to choose the thickness example and let's say that I want to use a lamina for that thickness example and for this I'm going to just choose arbitrarily let's say um, 977-2 IM7 and say OK and we can see how this will bring up three plies of the 977-2 using the thickness and the angles that we described in the thickness example. At the last minute I, for example, might want to add another ply. I've changed my mind, so I'll go in here and again choose some IM7 977-2. Perhaps that one is also 5 thousandths thick. Maybe that's a zero degree ply. And again, I change my mind, and I want to make this, let's say, eight plies total, and I want to make it symmetric. I'll click on the first ply row, and I'll shift-click on the last ply row to make it inclusive. And I can click the symmetric button, and now, indeed, I have a symmetric eight-ply laminate. It's called Bill. I need to save that laminate. And you can see the reaction on the left-hand side. I now have a plus under the tree. Sure enough, there's my laminate called Bill. So I can operate on that laminate using my menu items. Let's uh, say we want to find out what some of those laminate properties are, perhaps the ABD matrices. I can go in here and I can open the laminate we just built called Bill. There it is. I can go to the ABD matrix window, hit calculate, and my properties will be displayed there. You can see the, the B matrix is roughly zero. That's no surprise. It is symmetric laminate. My inverse for ABDs tab is also there. Okay, let's say for example now we want to look at a plate uh, in in a bending condition. We'll use the bill laminate to describe the layup for that plate. I'll go to the geometry tab and let's say for example we have a 12 inch by 12 inch plate. You'll notice that the thickness is imported from the laminate. We had eight plies at five thousandths thick, so it is indeed forty thousandths thick. And I have very uh, a bunch of options here on the calculate tab on how I want to load this. So I have simply supported on all sides, a uniform load. I have simply supported with a concentrated load, and it tells us how we want to describe that concentrated load. Or I have clamped edges if I'd like to look at that option. Uh, for now, I'm just going to choose, let's say, a, a uniform load. I'm going to use a pressure of, uh, let's just say, 0.2 PSI. And uh, for this scenario, uh, since it was a 12 by 12 inch plate, if I wanted to know the deflection in the middle, I would want to ask for that deflection at an X and Y at 6 inches. So I can calculate that. 
and it tells me my deflection at the point that I've chosen at, at the middle of this particular plate is 0 0.33 inches. You'll see the psychology for many of these calculations are very uh, very close on each one of these menu items. Let's uh, take a look at, let's say, a, boot, uh, a tube or a beam. We can go to a bending example. Again, we'll use the bill laminate. We can describe the tube geometry under the tube tab here however we would like. Perhaps it's rectangular, in cross section, uh, maybe it's a circle, uh, C channel, channel section, whatever. For this example, I'll, I'll choose, let's say, a simple circle. We'll use a radius of maybe uh, one inch. I'll go to the Calculate tab, and I can see how I might want to describe the loading for this. Perhaps it's simply supported with a point load in the middle des described as a distance x from one edge, or uh, simply supported uniform load, and so on. You can peruse these options at your leisure. For now, I'm just going to choose the point load, and uh, we'll say the length of the tube is, uh, let's say it's uh, 15 inches. Let's put, uh, let's put 25 pounds on it at a location that is, uh, let's say, in the middle at uh, 7.5 inches. Choose Calculate. And it tells me here that my maximum deflection is minus 0 0.00076 inches at an X location uh, 7.5 or in the middle. So very simple to use. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. It's at compositepro at fireholdtech.com.